The European Union's 27 member states have agreed on the Fit for 55 package, which, amongst other things, brings in stricter CO2 emissions targets for manufacturers from 2025 and 2030, and a de facto ban on the sale of new internal combustion engine-based vehicles from 2035. However, it does appear some concessions have been made for certain member states. So what does Fit for 55 mean for the automotive industry in Europe? And will we see motorways across the continent go from a roar to more of a gentle hum? The European Union has set itself a binding target of achieving climate neutrality by 2050. This requires current greenhouse gas emission levels to drop substantially in the next few decades. Fit for 55 will see the EU raise its 2030 climate ambition, committing to cutting emissions by at least 55% by 2030. Transport has a good place to play in this, and the package of measures includes an increase in the CO2 emissions reductions that were established just a couple of years ago. Car makers will need to meet significant CO2 reductions across new vehicles sold in that year based on 2021 levels, including a 15% reduction on CO2 emissions in 2025, a 55% reduction on CO2 emissions in 2030, and then a 100% reduction on CO2 emissions in 2035. This last target means new vehicle sales will be made entirely of zero emission vehicles, including electric and hydrogen models. The rules state, therefore, that by 2035, the only new vehicles that can be sold in the European Union with one of these will need to be hydrogen powered, emitting only water. That is, of course, unless e-fuels come into play. E-fuels were not initially part of the plans for the automotive section of Fit for 55. However, Following some uproar in Germany and other member states, the Commission has now added a new paragraph into its plans, which reads Following consultation with stakeholders, the Commission will make a proposal for registering, after 2035, vehicles running exclusively on CO2 neutral fuels, in conformity with EU law, outside the scope of the fleet standards, and in conformity with the Union's climate neutrality objective. But what exactly are e-fuels? Autobista24 journalist Rebecca Shade recently wrote about the subject on autobista24.com and has this to say. So e-fuels are known as synthetic fuels and their production is based on hydrogen and CO2. They are labelled as climate neutral because they use carbon dioxide from the atmosphere and can ideally be produced using renewable energy resources. Proponents of e-fuels, and that includes automotive associations and some car makers, they argue that e-fuels can relieve the climate of CO2 and may replace conventional fuels altogether. E-fuels also have a high energy density, are easy to store, and can be distributed by an already existing network of petrol stations. Overall, advocates tend to pitch synthetic fuels as a more sustainable way to transform the transport sector. So e-fuels could be the saviour for the internal combustion engine. But even if the ban on new internal combustion engine vehicle sales goes ahead in 2035, e-fuels will still have a critical part to play when it comes to the used vehicle market, especially in areas where EV infrastructure is in its infancy. Drivers may decide to hold on to their vehicles for longer, using e-fuels to lower carbon emissions, meaning we will still see ICE vehicles on roads for many years to come and that roar will still continue. The new Fit for 55 plans also include an extension to the derogation for vehicle manufacturers who produce less than 10,000 units a year. This is seen as a concession to Italy where a number of sports car manufacturers are located. Dubbed the Ferrari Amendment, it extends this exemption from CO2 emissions targets to 2035. With the likelihood that sports car manufacturers could struggle with their existing products in an electrified market due to the fact that performance is all about what they offer, this is an important step to ensure that these car makers can still meet targets in 2035 but not be under pressure to do so sooner. At the end of the most recent meeting between Ministers and the Environment Council to ratify Fit for 55 proposals, EU Executive Vice President Franz Timmermans said he had no doubt the automotive industry would be able to rise to the challenge ahead of it, calling it one of Europe's industrial leaders. 
but he did state an assessment would be made in a couple of years' time, the results of which would drive forward thinking based on technological neutrality and facts. But what has the automotive industry itself had to say about the new Fit for 55 package proposals? AutoVista24 Deputy Editor Tom Gegas has been taking a deep dive into some of the comments available. Thanks, Phil. It really was a deep dive as there were so many different reactions from across the industry. First up, Oliver Tsipser, CEO of BMW and President of the European Automobile Manufacturers Association, or SEA, said the automobile industry will fully contribute to the goal of carbon neutral Europe in 2050. He added that the decision of the Council raises significant questions which have not yet been answered, such as how Europe will ensure strategic access to the key raw materials for e-mobility. He explained that for the bloc to be at the front of sustainable mobility, the availability of these materials has to be secured. If not, the region could end up with new dependencies, given how other countries position themselves from an early stage. Then there's the European Association of Automotive Suppliers, known as CLEPA. Their Secretary General, Stingard de Vries, said that while the decision shuts the door on the internal combustion engine as of 2035, it left space to consider renewable fuels. She said we are glad to see support from the Council for vehicles running on renewable fuels. She added that, whereas we will see a vast deployment of electrical vehicles, there are practical, ready-to-use solutions available for hybrid vehicles, as well as the existing cars, vans and trucks on the road, which so far have not found sufficient political support. She commented that the decision confirms the need for a substantial transformation at a rapid pace. However, there is need for support from policymakers, especially when it comes to charging infrastructure, as well as the production of renewable power. Volkswagen Group said the turn to electromobility is irreversible, and that it's the only ecologically, technologically and economically sensible way to replace combustion engines as quickly as possible. It called the 2035 enter new internal combustion engine cars an ambitious but achievable goal. Volkswagen Group added that we are making our contribution with the consistent electrification of our model fleet. It is now important that the political goals are also underpinned by appropriate political measures in all member states. The car maker added that this includes an adequate supply of battery cells, a much faster expansion of the charging infrastructure, and an accelerated energy transition. On a more cautionary note, Arnold Buff, Stellantis' chief manufacturing officer, warned that unless electric vehicles become more affordable, the market will collapse, which was reported by Bloomberg. He confirmed that the automotive giant wants to lower the cost of manufacturing EVs by 40% come 2030. It is worth noting that in June we learnt of Stellantis' departure from ASEA, which is scheduled by the end of this year. The car maker will instead set up its own forum dedicated to the future of mobility. Volvo is set to leave the automotive association at the end of 2022 to pursue sustainable targets that it says are not in line with the sayers. But what does the decision mean for the future of the automotive industry, Phil? It is clear that Fit for 55 will change Europe's automotive industry by 2035. But even if e-fuels remain on the table, let's not forget car makers are spending billions of euros developing and researching zero emission technologies. Coupled to this, many had their own carbon neutrality strategies, including manufacturing and supply chain. So they're not going to want to just give that up. There's also something else to consider. The EU wants to end the EV incentive scheme by 2030. This gives a reduction in CO2 emission targets for individual manufacturers, depending on whether they meet a threshold of zero and low emission vehicle sales. Therefore, car makers who are already thinking about future models need to factor in future drivetrains as well. Are they really going to want to be pushing internal combustion engine or low emission technologies such as FEVs when they won't get credits for them? Now, 2035 may see a reduction in new registrations across Europe as drivers who don't want to go down the EV route or can't because the infrastructure is too weak will then turn to the second-hand car market instead, which will see a bolster. But the e-fuels debate could help in that market by reducing carbon footprints. It's clear Europe has a strict plan in place to go electric and zero emission by 2035. The question is, how will this look? Not rather than if.